every adoption story is unique, but for thousands of Chilean kids, they are shockingly similar. That's why a set of twins chose to dive deeper into their truth. They will join us live in just a minute, but first, here is their story. <laughs> Growing up in Western Massachusetts, it's a picture-perfect childhood for Elon and Micah Nardi. My parents were always open about our adoption, anything that we wanted to know. When the boys are five years old, they are told their adoption story by their parents. Our mother in Chile could not take care of us at the time um, because she had too many kids and not enough resources to um, provide for us properly. Um, and she decided to give us up. The twins never really feel the urge to search for their birth family, but last year, that changed. When I saw the New York Times article um, about, about Tyler, and I said, hey, uh, all of the details that you mentioned in your story published in the New York Times, that's exactly what we saw in our paperwork and exactly our story. Thousands of Chilean children are put up for adoption by mothers who are too poor to pay for them. But is it the truth? It was lawyers, nurses, judges, everyone was involved in, in this um, um, in this scheme. Multiple stories start to appear. I said, I only want to ask one question first to, um, to our birth mother. I want to ask if we were given up on purpose. Elon reaches out to a nonprofit helping Chilean children. And then like early March, they were like, we found your family. The twins schedule a Zoom call with their birth family and finally learn their truth. And I was sitting in the chair in my living room with my wife and I just started crying. The real story is that our mother took one of our six siblings to a hospital in 1986 when we were babies to treat that sibling. And someone approached her, some social worker or people at the hospital, and offered to watch us. And our mother came back to get us a couple hours later, but um, we weren't there. We had disappeared. Wow, what a heart-wrenching and remarkable story. To hear more, please welcome to the show, Micah and Elon, thank you. Oh my gosh. You could hear a pin drop in the studio. Welcome, guys. You both were stolen from your birth family. Um, are you mad? Are you really mad about what happened? Elon, I want to start with you, but just you have the floor because I would be really mad. No, I'm not mad. I'm more sad that I missed out on all of that time with our family in Chile that we didn't get to grow up with our siblings. <clears throat> but I'm excited that we found them and I just want to move forward. Yeah. And Micah, how do you feel? Yeah, naturally, I think initially I was a little mad um, just because there was a lot of uncertainty. And, um, you know, we we grew up with such a, a loving um, family in the United States. Yeah. Um, I think if things were different, then um, there'd be a little bit more anger and resentment. But um, like Elon said, we just want to move forward and um, get to know our, our birth family in Chile. Micah, um, I understand that you met your birth family via Zoom, so I, I'm wondering how you were feeling and was there a moment on the call that put you more at ease? Yeah, it was very overwhelming um, to have the initial meeting with uh, our, our birth family in, in Chile. Um, one of the things that put me the most at ease um, was the story that they um, told us and they, they showed us this picture that they had kept with us for 36 years. Um, wow. They had kept in their house saying that we'd never forgotten about you. Um, we, we, um, you know, overall, all this time we, we've remembered you and we haven't forgotten about you. So that, that helped me feel a little bit better with all the uncertainty that was going on. Um, to hear the sincerity in their voice um, was definitely calming. Yeah, I, I just want to say this story is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I met my adult sister in my adult years. And so, like, I'm on this this kind of similar trajectory as you guys. So I, I kind of uh, appreciate what you're going through, although no one can really know your story. And I appreciate you guys sharing it. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you, Elon. Your birth family never forgot about you. What lengths did they go that you know of to search for you? Yeah, so the day that we disappeared, our siblings were out on the streets looking for us, um, wow. and they were out every day looking for us after that. Um, wow. And our birth mother went to a radio station to um, tell her story. And in 1992, she was actually on a Chilean TV station um, with our siblings in that video oh crying for us. Oh my gosh, wow. 
I have, that's, a, that's a mom that's right there. Mom. Every day. I can't imagine what she's been through. Wow. My heart. Um, I'm so happy that you're reunited. Uh, Micah, over the summer, you went to meet your family. What was it like to actually stand next to them? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I mean, all, all these years, I've always wondered what our birth family looked like and um, our birth parents, our siblings. So to be able to stand next to them and um, be able to see their physical features, I just, I had no words. Um, eyes, nose, ears, uh, all looked similar. There's no doubt that we were related. Wow. Unbelievable. DBL Nation, uh, we always want to leave you with actionable steps and knowledge. So some 20,000 Chilean kids were adopted and sent to different countries and Chile estimates at least 8,000 are suspicious. So there are three organizations helping adopted children from Chile. So for more information, please visit connecting-roots.com. Also, nasbuscamos.org and myheritage. Dot com. Micah, Elon, thank you for sharing your story. Incredible. And uh, happy holidays yes. to you and your family. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Congrats thank you.